Righty ho. So today our story is the Lorax, and of course we know it's by Dr. Zeus. And we know that the Lorax has a really got a good story in here about telling us about what we need to do. And it's probably a good story to think about now with our bubbles when we're when we're breaking out from our bubbles back out into the real world. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows is the street of the listed, lifted lorax. Doesn't look much fun there at all, does it? And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you will still see today where the lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the lorax away. Look who's come to visit my story time, can you see? <laughs> it's my cat Baxter, he's come to hear our story. <laughs> he's a bit tricky, he's just come in for his breakfast. What was the lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old onceler still lives here, ask him. He knows. You won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lyricum on top of his store. He lurks in his lyricum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffed moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 pence, and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. You see all those things he's tossing in? I wonder what he does with all the snail's shells. That's kind of crazy. Then he pulls up the pail after most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snuv, in his secret strange hole in his grovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. It's secret, isn't it? A bit tricky. Here we go. Slurp. Down slurps the whisper my phone to your ear and once and the old once's whispers are not very clear. I've got my finger on the right of his face, haven't I? Since they have to come down through a snuggly hose and he sounds as if he had small bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding grey, how the lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back. Such a long, long time back. I want to know how someone's teeth can sound grey. How do teeth sound grey? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Oh, look at this. Here's a much prettier view. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffular trees, the bright coloured tufts of the truffular trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Crazy looking trees, aren't they? Truffular trees. And under the trees I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of humming fish humming while splashing around. Uh oh. But those trees, those trees, those truffular trees, all my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what to do. I unloaded my cart. I wonder what butterfly milk tastes like or smells like. You'd have to take a lot of butterflies to get a glass of butterfly milk. In no time at all I had built a small shop, then I chopped down a truffular tree with one chop, and with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed I took the soft tuft and I knitted 
us need us need that's pretty cool the instant i finished it i heard a gazump i looked I saw something pop out of that stump. Of the tree I'd chopped down, it was sort of a man. Describe him, it's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the lorax and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset and he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, lorax, I said. There's no cause for alarm. I just chopped one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. It's far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The lorix said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that full need? It does look a bit odd, doesn't it? Not quite sure how you get into it. But that very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people might buy. Goodness. I repeat, cried the Thneed, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts. I said, listen here. Here's a great, wonderful chance for the old, whole once in a family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. It's pretty clever being able to build all these things all by himself, isn't he? And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Hmm. Probably when you're chopping things down and not planting things again, though, isn't it? We might run out of stuff. Righty hi. Then, oh baby, oh how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which what what whacked off four truffula trees with one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before, and that lorax, well, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week. He knocked at my door. He snapped. I'm the lorax. Turn your speaker off, please. I'm the lorax who speaks for the trees, but you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to you hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruits to go round and my poor barbaloots are getting the crummies because they have no gas and no food in their tummies. They don't look very happy at all, do they? The poor barbaloots. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. When you flick back to looking at where they were there, look at them there. Look how happy they were there, playing in their truffula trees, eating their fruit. And now look how sad they are having to go. 
I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger. So bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the thneeds I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling, selling more thneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lawrence came back with more gripes. I'm the Lorix. He coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffed. He snuggled. He sniffed. Once, la, he said with a crofulous croak. Once, la, you're making such smogulous smoke. He doesn't look very well at all, does he? Look at him. He's not looking healthy at all. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. Sorry, I just had to turn that phone off. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. Poor wee fella. And so, said the Lorix, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up round here. Gosh, they don't look very well at all. Poor swimmy swans. What's more? snapped the lorix. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machine chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup, also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old once le man. You can see it's going down these pipes. I wonder where it goes to. Schloppula schlop and gluppity glup. You're glumping the pond with a humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. I hear things are just as bad up at Lake Erie. So again, we go back to that first picture. They look, they were so happy in their little pond. See them there? They were very happy, and now they're not so happy. Oh, Sienna is the Lorix. <laughs> and then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorix. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say, bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorix, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. Turning more truffular trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. At that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From out in the fields came a sickening smack. The axe of a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffular tree of them all. No more trees, okay. no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. Now all that was left beneath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty, empty factory, the Lorix, and I. Mm. It's a bit sad, isn't it? The Lorix said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hoisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. It's a bit tricky because in our English we don't say glance and pants, they don't rhyme. If I'd said glance and pants, we would have rhymed. So there you go. 
And all that the lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I couldn't possibly guess. That was a long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I worried about it with all of my heart. What do you think that means? Unless. But now, says the once, now that you're here, the word of the lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's, well, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. The last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water. And feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that hack. Then the lorax and all of his friends may come back. Mmm, it's a bit tricky and sad, that story, isn't it? And there's a wee message for some of the things that we might like to do. So tomorrow, team, we're going to read some school books, some school story books about being at school because it's going to be great to be at school. And in fact, Mr. James, I might even read our little, um, our, you know what I'm saying, but I forgot the word. Um, yeah, I might read that book to them tomorrow as well. We'll see if we can get it. Um, nope. Our wee social story. Story. There you go. I got it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, lovely people. Kakitea, Popo. I will see Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.